Joining me right now is House Republican Conference Chair and Washington Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers. Good to see you, Congresswoman. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. Good to be with you. Your thoughts on this? You know, I was actually really struck by the interview last night that Comey did with CNN, and basically he he said no, I didn't leak anything, but then went on to talk about how in fact he did leak uh, these memos that he wrote. Which as soon as an FBI director writes a memo uh, in FBI you know headquarters, that is the property of the FBI, uh, but he said he passed it on to his friend and told his friend, oh, just get this to the New York Times, but don't actually give them the paper. And he says that's not mm -hmm. leaking. Your reaction? Well, it, uh, yeah, it, 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 it begs a lot of questions. And as someone who believes it's so important that we are restoring trust, that we are restoring the rule of law in this country, the FBI is the highest law, law enforcement agency. This is uh, the people within the FBI must be held to the highest standards. And, and that is what causes me so much dismay right now is just the, the cloud that is over the FBI and the, the questions that it has raised. We need the men and women there to act in the utmost uh, authority as well as transparency and accountability to the American people. And so, uh, yeah, it, yeah, he clearly leaked uh, and, and it raises a lot of questions. But is there going to be any accountability here, Congresswoman? I mean, look, last weekend I had your colleague, De uh, Congressman Devin Nunes, on my Sunday morning program and he said after looking at all the electronic communications, he realized that there was no intelligence used to actually launch an investigation into the Trump campaign. So what happens now? I mean, can we just keep seeing, you know, people at the top of these important agencies abuse their power with no accountability? No one's above the law, and they must be held accountable, and that's the role of Congress. That's the role of the elected representatives of the people within the House to make sure that we are taking action to hold them accountable. So both in the Intelligence Committee as well as the Government uh, Oversight and Reform Committee, uh, uh, which Trey Gowdy is the chairman of, that's where these questions are asked, and that's where uh, there's been frustration that documents have not been turned over, that people have not been as forthright uh, in answering the questions, but it is up to us to make sure that people are held accountable and that no one is uh, above the law. All right, well, we'll be watching what, what develops then. Then there's this, the breaking news this morning, Congressman, and that is Dr. Ronnie Jackson withdrawing his name for consideration for the head of the VA, President Trump's pick to lead the Department of Veterans Affairs, pulled his nomination in the last hour. Amid all of these questions surrounding his professional conduct, Congressman, your reaction to this news I respect his decision it's most important that we get someone at the VA again we need to restore trust between the veterans and this agency whose mission is to serve our veterans and as someone who represents nearly 70,000 veterans in eastern Washington I hear regularly from veterans who feel like when they contact the VA that they're more of a burden than actually having the red carpet rolled out for them. So we need someone to head up the VA. We need to get focused on the mission of the VA and make sure that our veterans, those who've served, are getting the care that they need when the time comes. That, that has to be a, a top priority for but, us. But, I mean, can we just ignore all of the barriers and the booby traps that the left is putting in place for the Trump administration? I mean, look at all of the positions that are yet unfilled. Look at all of the slow walking going on in terms of uh, getting his nominate, nominees passed. You know, Mike Pompeo got, you know, got support, but... It, it was close. I mean, what about that? Who is doing this? We know that three administrations have said how great Dr. Ronnie Jackson is, and all of a sudden, yes. somebody leaks all of this speculation about his personal life. Well, that, that is, dis, uh, yeah, that's, that's tough to see, and I respect his decision just to pull out. I, I am concerned that the left is putting politics ahead of what's best for the country. And there's so many, there's, there's the, the VA position, Mike Pompeo as Secretary of State. Uh, he is a, he's an honorable man, a well-respected leader. He's proven himself, and yet too many were willing to put politics ahead of what was best for the country. We do need to get these people in place because that is part of making sure that President Trump has the, the people around him to actually lead and, and people equal policy. And he needs these people in place so that we can keep moving forward. Yeah. There's a lot on our plate right I now. I think people are, are figuring this out, that there's all, all of these booby traps that are being put in by the skeptics and critics of President Trump. And then there's China, of course, reportedly threatening to, quote, uh, fierce counterstrike. If the president goes ahead with these another $100 billion in tariffs as punishment for the alleged intellectual property theft, Congressman, your thoughts on this? I know Stephen Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, and a whole delegation are going next week to meet with their counterparts in China to talk this out. 
Right. Well, there's too many examples of illegal practices by China where we have seen them taking our intellectual property and duplicating it. Um, I, have, I have examples in eastern, eastern Washington, Washington State, and it destroys companies here in America. Uh, I am encouraged that President Trump is focused on making sure that we hold China accountable. I have had concerns about the across-the-board approach, the tariffs that you know, he was talking about imposing upon steel and aluminum. I do believe it needs to be more targeted, but we must hold a, a country like China accountable for illegal practices or free and fair trade will never work. Bottom line, do you think that the president, with his tough talk and, and the, the team, uh, is going to be able to cut that budget deficit with China, which is already now up to $375 billion? Well, if anyone can do it, I believe it's President Trump. Yeah. And he is focused on this. Uh, I had the chance to spend some time with Larry Kudlow just last week. I'm really pleased to see him as the, the head of the, uh, the economic advisors, his chief economic advisor. He understands uh, economics and world trade and, and also what's going on in China. Right. And he, he basically told us everything's on the table, tariffs, no tariffs. Um, sanctions, but we, we must hold them accountable. And, and he's going to be on that trip as well, Larry Kudlow and, and Peter Navarro. What, what about this budget about face, Congresswoman? President Trump is now uh, urging lawmakers to rescind some of the spending in that $1.3 trillion omnibus spending bill, which he signed last month. Congressman, are there enough votes to make it happen? And obviously, you must be getting just as much pushback as so many others are for signing that $1.3 trillion omnibus bill with all the spending. Right. Well, we must address the spending in this country. Uh, it is the number one threat that faces us, both from a military perspective as well as economic perspective. Uh, we needed to get a budget in place, but it spends too much. And that's where I am. I'm actually encouraged that the president, Mick Mulvaney, is leading on putting together a, re a rescissions package. You know, we should have been doing this all along, really taking a look at those opportunities to um, go into programs, go into agencies, and actually... Uh, through the House and the Senate, cut the spending. Uh, the budget process is broken. Right. The House passed all 12 of our appropriations bills. We went through program by program, agency by agency. The Senate did zero. So this has been very frustrating. This is our fundamental job as the elected representatives. This is where we exercise the power of the purse, and yet this process is broken. So I, I am... I, definitely want to look at what the the president what they can propose i think the house and senate should also be using this tool of rescission yeah. to take action that we can to reduce those deficits and reduce the debt the, the french president emmanuel macron wrapped up his three-day state visit with an address to the joint meeting of congress how was it what, what was your takeaway he was critical of the president's planned withdrawal from the iran nuclear deal well I think it's important that these conversations can continue. Yeah, I've never been a supporter of the Iran deal. I thought it was a bad deal. It did not hold Iran accountable for not developing or obtaining nuclear weapons. And that's where we need our European allies to join us in making sure that we have a deal that is going to accomplish the goal of ensuring that they do not develop nuclear weapons. Yeah. And right now, we do not have that confidence. Congressman, real quick, who are you supporting for Speaker of the House? Well, you know, I, I, we need to make sure that we are voting on a Republican speaker after the election. So we need to stay focused on the policy and on our midterms and making sure that we're getting that done. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much.